Hello, I'm a Get Extra Cat, and while I'm in Japan, one of the biggest downsides is the fact that I can't live stream because of the huge time difference. And I figured rather than just not live streaming, I really like to stay consistent to the schedule and to give you some Toy Cat content at your 8 pm on Tuesdays and Thursdays. So for the next three weeks, what I'm gonna be doing at this exact time is doing a little bit of a Toy Cat podcast. That's right, a lot of people like listening to the live streams as kind of a little bit of a podcast anyway. So for the next three weeks, we're gonna be doing a Toy Cat style podcast, and we'll vary what's in the background. We'll start off some Minecraft, but who knows what we'll end up at. But again, this is meant to be an audio only think so don't feel bad if you missed the video it's only there if you like something to look at while you listen to the toy cat podcast and that's right we're going to talk about the biggest most important issue in the world everyone's been wondering about it everyone's been asking about it it is plastic straws we're finally going to get around to talking about plastic straws and if we're being entirely honest it might turn into a little bit of a rant but i'm going to try and avoid that at least a little bit and also i want to talk about some other things such as the most important dessert because you know there are a great many important things in the world such as the plastic straw debate such as the debate about round waste recycling cycling and stuff, but I think what's way more important is deciding which dessert to get. In life, you're only allowed to have a certain amount of dessert, and if you try to eat more than that, you know, if I ate like, you know, 10 cheesecakes a day, I would die a lot faster than if I didn't, and because of the fact that you have such a limited amount of dessert, it's kind of like if you learned you have a year left to live, you've got this tiny supply of it, so you've got to make the best of it. It's like if you had $10,000 and you have to make it last the rest of your life, you would change up everything about how you deal with that, but dessert, not everyone is so careful, so we're going to go through the top 5 desserts first of all and then we'll bring it back around into, you know, straws and stuff. So first of all, let's start with a dessert that makes it into everyone's, like, you know, top 50 list or something as a pretty inoffensive good dessert, but it's not the greatest because jelly, or I think in America it's called jello, but you know the weird kind of gelatinous weird blobs that isn't quite a liquid, isn't quite a solid? That right there is what I'm going to rate as the fifth best dessert, solidly just because of the fact that it's really inoffensive, it's not actually, like, as bad for you as some desserts, but it really fits into the category of, like, this doesn't really do anyone happy. No one's ever like, yes, jelly, it's the best dessert in the world. Everyone's just kind of like, yeah, that's either good, like, uh, or I don't really care about it, so I just won't eat dessert. You know, if you if you bring out a jello, no one's ever offended. It's never the exact wrong choice. You either feel like you're kind of pleased that it's there, or you're really, you know, like, just kind of gonna skip it because it's not there. Like, okay, there's only jelly, I guess I'm not going for it. And I think that's a really solid choice, just as a fifth here, because if you have to pick five desserts, I think jelly should always be there, even if you have to pick three. Jelly's always the solid, neutral, like, okay, no one can be all the way offended, because someone's always going to have jelly. And honestly, some people really do like jelly. I think jelly's a great fun dessert because how often do you get to eat this weird, like, almost like fifth state of matter, right? Like, is it a liquid? Is it a solid? I don't know. You can suck it like it's almost like a liquid, but then it's solid if you hold it in your hands. I love the questions that jelly poses. I love that it's a existential dessert. And yeah, that's why it gets fifth place here. Fourth place is going to go to any form of meringue or like tart style dessert because here's the thing, right? Meringue is the most amazing thing the first time you have it, or at least it was for me, like a really good lemon and meringue and you're mind blown you're like yes this is fancy this is good it's got those funny white swirls on the crust or whatever you want to call it I'm not sure the dessert term there but I'm gonna be honest with you here there's some pieces of knowledge that just I think society doesn't share so well even because it's not easily you know memeable it's not easily shareable it's not like it doesn't like it help anyone out too greatly and I feel like this piece of information falls in that category and that is that meringue seems so great it's so amazing until you actually realize that the amazing bit of meringue the thing that makes it a great dessert as opposed to just a solidly okay one is those little, uh, you know, the swells. They're called nests at the edge. And you can buy meringue nests by themselves. They're actually quite, uh, you know, again, they're, they're quite healthy in the grand scheme of weird desserts. And at one point, I don't know why, but my mother bought something like, I uh, know, a hundred of them. And I would just take one every now and then, hope it wouldn't get noticed. And it never did, because I'm just that terrible person who steals some fridges. But I just slowly take one after one after another. And I just realized, like, this is all the joy of meringue with none of the, like, everything else attached. Basically, you know, the, the weird meringue nests and the tart, they're both pretty good by themselves. And when you realize that you can get all the joy with none of the guilt, then why would you take the guilt, you know? It's like, if you could murder someone, or you could have them accidentally die by themselves, you know, I'm just saying, there's a reason all supervillains are like, maybe my friend the opposition should run into an accident. He doesn't say, maybe he should be killed in broad daylight, they're like, yeah, maybe it'd be cool if he ha had an accident, and I know that's code for, please go kill him. But again, uh, it's, if, if you cannot feel guilt, why would you not pick that option? And that's why I'm going with meringue in number four. Great dessert until you realize the truth. And I'm sorry, I have to share the truth. Even if the dessert lobby is going to come after me for this, I need to let you know about that. So we can move on to the third best dessert, which in my opinion is a warm cookie. Uh, so warm cookies, my God, especially, well, freshly baked really, because you can warm up a cookie, but it's really hard. Like if you take a Subway cookie or something, you're never going to get that to feel like a warm, fresh cookie. But a warm, 
fresh cookie is my god it is so good and again the only real downsides of this is really it's hard to have a stack of like warm cookies they'll get cold by the time you get to the bottom also like it's kind of weird to ask for a snack you kind of eat them like pancakes and it's not really individual cookies at that point so you know the quantity is a, is, is a downside here but warm cookies with a little bit of cold or something like maybe some ice cream on the side maybe some cream whatever cold things you need even an ice cube I don't think an ice cube would work I guess it has to be milk based but something a little bit cold on the side I love that fusion of cold and hot when you got warm freshly baked goods with some cold on the side my god best dessert around but it's not as good as the second best dessert I know the tension's high here it's like my god this is the first episode so I can't but we're enthralled where is this top five list ending us up because the second best dessert is any form of ice cream uh, that you like. I mean, like, honestly, there's, here's the crazy thing about ice cream. When you first try it when you're young, at least for me, maybe this is my family. Maybe I'm telling you all about my upbringing too much here. But when you first have ice cream, it's like, oh, yeah, this is pretty good. This is like weird ice frozen into balls or cream frozen into balls or milk. It's, it's this weird milky, icy product. And you're like, okay, this is pretty good stuff. Then you realize as an adult, that as an adult there's kind of two ice creams. I don't know where the category switches. But when you go into the, the really good ice cream flavors, you're like, my God, this is an art. This is a science. This is the, we should have art galleries of just different ice cream flavors. Why do people look at art all day when there's a thousand ice cream flavors they haven't tried because they're stupid. They're not expanding their minds enough. They're not exploring the ice cream world enough because ice cream is, it can be amazing. If you do, if you've never been to an ice cream parlor, like a, a, a good ice cream shop, if you have a good one around you, like, I don't know, check Google Maps or check, check whatever else. Try and find a dessert parlor. Try out a weird flavor like a rum and raisin. Sounds awful. I don't really like raisins and, you know, rum is like, <laughs> I like rum, but it's not like a good flavor. It tastes quite bad in most, uh, you know, contexts you try it in. But my God, you're like, yeah, this is, this is the future. Like, good amazing ice cream. There is good ice cream out there. And if you've never had it, this is my quick reminder that you should. Because a good ice cream, again, you can just eat so much of it, cover some sauce in it, cover it with every other dessert. And here's the best bit. You can have it with every other dessert on this list. Throw in some meringue and some ice cream, sure. A jelly and ice cream, it's a real thing people mix. It has a weird combination, but sure, go for it. You want to go for any of the other ones on this list? You can do it with ice cream. And that's why ice cream's number two. But it's not quite my number one. My number one best dessert is gonna go for the cheesecake. So let me start by saying that, man, cheesecake is such a clickbait title. Like, if che if, if cheesecake was a YouTube video, everyone would be disliking, being like, oh, I came here for cheesy flavored cake, and I, all I got instead was the best dessert on Toy Cat's top five list. Because here's the thing, right? Cheesecake is amazing. There are so many types of cheesecake. If you think, oh, no, I don't like cheesecake, I had it that one time. Again, there's like multiple different ways to do it. My favorite uh, particular variant I've ever had is, I think it was from the Cheesecake Factory in America. I was like, oh, they're called the Cheesecake Factory, but they focus on other things. Their cheesecakes can't be so good. Every one of their cheesecake contains a day worth of calories. If you ate nothing but that cheesecake in a day, it would still be on a healthy day. You'd still gain weight. I, I think we could probably do some science. Like, if you eat one slice of cheesecake from there a day, you would still gain weight over an amount of time. That's how horrific for you these cheesecakes are. But my god, they are rich. They're they're filled with flavor. But if you want, you can go with a nice, a light cheesecake. If you want, you can go with a, uh, the New York freshly baked one. There's so many great ways to do cheesecake. And the best bit is you can actually make it yourself. And it's mind blowing when you realize it's not clickbait. There is cheese in there. You, everyone believes that. Nah, it can't be true. Now nah, there is cheese involved in cheesecake, and yet somehow you never taste it in the final product. You can mix it with ice cream. You can mix it with cookies. It's the best dessert, hands down. When you have a good cheesecake, you're having a good time, and that is the top five desserts, which is a nice light intro because we're talking about a heavy subject today, or rather quite a light subject, I think I could say, because plastic straws are incredibly light. If you don't know, uh, I want to talk about plastic straws, which at least in the Western countries, so uh, the UK, I've seen it happen more and more in the US as well, but plastic straws are slowly going away. In the UK, it's very hard to find anywhere that does them. If they do do plastic straws, now they're seen as this like commodity resource, like, hey, you want any plastic straws? You gotta, you gotta like meet someone like they're a drug dealer, but like, yeah, I, I got some for you. Because Everywhere is being like, all of a sudden, plastic straws are the enemy. Everyone is against plastic straws. And this kind of annoys me uh, personally. Not because I think we should pollute the environment. I think, uh, you know, pa paper straws are, meant, you know, logically speaking, probably slightly better for the environment because even if you get rid of them, like, you know, pa paper takes less time to degrade than the hundreds of years that plastic can take. So, you know, I'm sure there's some really great benefits in the end. But here's why I don't like it. Here's why I'm angry every time I get given a, pa a paper straw as opposed to a plastic one. It's not because I don't want this solution to be caught. It's not because I'm not 
development team ever announced like, yeah, screw burning our environment and killing it, etc. I would really like it if we still had a planet in however many years you're thinking of. I'd like it if I could live on that planet. That would be great too. But here's the thing. Solutions are something I love. I am passionate about solutions. I love going through any point in history and seeing like the different solutions people have to come up with to fix various issues. You see, lots of times you end up in a situation where you're like, ah, oh, I'm trapped between a rock and a hard place. I have to either, you know, satisfy half the people or the other half. And you can suddenly satisfy everyone. There's, there's so many solutions like that where we're like, oh my God, we are gonna end up with a bad thing here. And then someone can fix the thing. I love solutions. And the modern world is filled with solutions to every layer of problem you can imagine. Like, oh, you know, like clean drinking water. It's something like seven cents uh, per liter to, you know, like have a little mixture that you can deal with that. Uh, there's so many weird like little solutions like, oh yeah, smartphones for the world that, you know, they just can't deal with that. Oh, they have $50 smartphones in a lot of the developing world. And also because cell phone towers are cheaper to make than the traditional uh, infrastructure of telephone wires, all those countries can take up. Like we're working on solutions that are making the world so much better in so many different ways. But when it comes to like certain things in, let's say the West, in, in the UK, in the EU, in the, you know, North America, let's say, uh, when it comes to like, you know, the, the countries that most of you watching this are from and that I am personally uh, from and like kind of identify with in some way, uh, like it, can't, it seems to be that like the idea of fixing things and making uh, like humanity and everyone's lives better seems to go away at certain points. It seems as though we've lost the power of like the individual to fix things. And in case you're curious as what I mean by that, I think we all agree that we'd all be happier if we could all have a slightly easier or better life or whatever while all potentially having more money while all also helping the environment a little more than we currently do. Everyone wants all of those things, right? And I think people who spend a significant amount of time complaining about certain things don't think about any of those things at all. They just kind of pick an enemy and then target it. So when you look at people who were campaigning against uh, plastic straws and even when you just look at like certain random people, I've spoken to a bunch of people about paper straws who I didn't know before and they're like, yeah, I'm so glad we finally got pa uh, paper straws. It's so much better for the world. And it's like, but it's not though. Like they d they don't take a paper straw anymore because they're terrible. And it's like this this wasn't a solution, you know. This this was we didn't fix a thing. Um, because if you if you really wanted to cut waste, if your plan was just like okay, we're gonna cut waste. What we're gonna do is we're gonna kill everyone who's wasted anything. If you ever throw any amount of anything to landfill, we're gonna kill you. That would cut waste to zero. Anyone who wastes get killed immediately. Death penalty sorted. Right problem solved. We've done it as humanity. Everyone has to like hoard the rubbish by themselves, deal with it themselves, and we fix that externality. We've cut waste to zero. Except, do you want that? You probably don't, right? Even if you're pro paper straw as you watch this video, you're like, actually, no, Toy Cat, you're going a bit far there. Maybe we shouldn't start killing people because they pollute, because it's a natural part of the lifestyle, the world we live in, etc. But, you know, I'm going to take this a step further even and say, no, are you right, actually? That's not cutting the waste to all the way to zero, because there's still some things that humans inherently do, such as we farm animals or, like, you know, we have transport, etc. That's that. That causes downsides to the environment. So let's just kill all humans. Honestly, if you want to save the planet, the best solution, like if your one goal in life is to save the planet, kill all humans. Like humans are basically a parasite on the planet, right? Like we're, we pollute a bunch. We kind of just take more than we give. We kill so many hundreds of animal species, except do you know why we don't kill all humans? Do you know why no one seriously ever raises that? Even like crazy terrorist groups, like even think of your worst enemy, like ISIS or, you know, like Al Qaeda or whatever. I, I can't think of a, a, like a, a group of bad guys who actually exist, but it's like none of them are actually like, let's kill all humans. They might say kill a significant portion of humans, but it's never kill all humans and it's not because they want to save the environment either because no one thinks that's a good solution that's not a good solution to fixing world waste that's not a good solution to any of the things i mentioned earlier because then there are no humans to enjoy the thing. If we're being entirely honest, some amount of what we're trying to do is make the world better for us to enjoy while also making it more sustainable, more whatever you want, more wealthy, more equal, more productive, more whatever word you want to apply to that. We all want slightly different goals, but we also want it to be better as we get there. And that's why solving problems means making a better solution, not forcing a worse solution on everyone. So many people just have this reflex inside them where like when they hear something's bad, they're just like, ah, we'll just get rid of that one thing. And that seems like a good idea on the surface. I, I never want to say anyone who's like, oh yeah, let's just get rid of things that are bad, have a bad idea, because that seems great as a, a thing. But there's a reason that people pick up these things that are evil 
cool or bad or, you know, not in your interests or uh, fight against the things you don't like because they do some great thing for them on a personal level and perhaps on the level of the goals they care about, you know, like everyone has these slightly different goals and to think that your goals are somehow higher than everyone else's is something I've always found a little bit weird in some people. But a good example of this, for instance, would be like, what if someone said tomorrow, like, oh man, we've worked out one of the biggest problems because the amount of like, I don't know, CO2 that's put into producing them, plus the amount they use every single time, uh, day they go is to just ban cars. The only way to get around is now to ride bikes, right? Uh, you know, whether like motorized or not, like you can ride bikes everywhere, but no more cars. We've solved the problem of cars now. Imagine what would happen then, right? That's not a solution to any problem. It sounds like it is. Someone gets to say, oh yeah, I personally got to fix all of these, uh, you know, emissions or whatever. But then at the same time, everything takes a giant downside, like shipping doesn't work correctly. Uh, you know, like uh, if you want to get around, it now takes like three times as long. Basically everything gets significantly worse in exchange for that tiny upside. And the reason we don't do that is because we weigh the pros versus the cons. You know, what life should be is everyone constantly weighing pros versus cons. And sometimes you should add more things to the basket of consideration. So personally, you know, I care about in any decision like, okay, so how happy will this make me? Like how happy will this make the people around me? Is this the right thing to do? Uh, you know, it d does this help the world? You know, you have your own particular priorities, your own basket, and you should expand that. You should make that the best version of what you want things to be, but no one should be able to force you to put things in your basket, and you shouldn't force things into other people's little baskets of things they care about. You can try and convince them, but it's never gonna entirely work. And the reason this rant is about straws is because think about the, the solution to plastic straws, right? So people were, people were upset that there were plastic straws everywhere, like, oh, that's so bad. Like, ne think about all the unnecessary waste. So the solution was let's make paper straws. And on the surface, it's like, okay, so this is a solution, right? Because we've gotten rid of the offending straws and we've made them out of material that's slightly better. Boom, everyone's a winner. You get exactly the same or you get not. But no, paper straws are, don't work as straws. What we've done is we've taken something that we thought were pretty good and we've replaced them with something that literally do not work. If you've never used a paper straw, by the way, one, they feel awful in your mouth. Like they just, they, they have a bad mouth feel, I think is the term. Two, there's not actually much evidence they cause significantly less waste. Like, you still have to buy them in huge quantities, and you have to buy them in even bigger quantities, because most people, when they grab one of these, they need to grab two or three, and I'll, I'll be honest, I grab four each time, because they dissolve in about 30 seconds. Think about trying to use paper as a straw. Think about how quick that's going to break down, because you know what water, any liquid, you know, especially like a fizzy one, does to the paper? It makes it not work. So you have a less pleasant straw while it exists, and then you need more of them because they go away faster, and and it's like, wait, 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 wait a second here. So our solution to this problem is objectively worse in every way, except we think it probably helps a little bit with the, again, the, the kind of nebulous goal of the environment, except even on that goal, like we're talking about a tiny fraction of a tiny fraction of a tiny fraction of an industry, which, uh, you know, like does that. And we're like, wait a minute. So we have been rallying around this like idea of let's replace the, you know, these, uh, you know, useful things of slightly less useful ones. And then uh, the, the logic is like, well, I mean, we basically just replace something which is exactly the same but better except it's not exactly the same but better if you ever gave people the choice or you know let's say uh you know yeah we, we end up in a world where everyone just accepts like oh yeah there's two types of straws the paper ones or the plastic ones which ones do you think will go faster is there, is there ever gonna be a situation where like oh no they ran out of paper straws i really i'm really sad because i can't get a straw that doesn't work as a straw also feels weird in my mouth also you know like isn't really great in any way and is hard to dispose oh man this is so bad if only they had more of those i guess i have to use a plastic straw no, no one ever has that opinion. What it really comes down to is people who either don't use straws in the first place or people who like, you know, don't mind plastic paper straws or people who do think it's worth taking that small sacrifice have, uh, you know, decided that, you know, through this weird aggressive campaigning, this weird uh, kind of like eco thing that now we've moved to a world where, oh yeah, we're just going to have to use these terrible straws or not use any at all. And that's saving the environment. And in a way, getting people to not use straws does really help because there's no waste that generates it at all. But it got rid of something that people value. People, you know, probably quite quite liked. And that means that people have now claimed a victory because they've just done something that is really the equivalent of taking away people's cars. Like, if you got if you got rid of people's cars, the person who makes the decision, the people who are behind that decision, get to feel like they've helped things. But really, the amount of devastation and the amount of just, you know, like negative consequences is way outweighed. And that's what kind of annoys me. When a solution to something is really just, let's make people who aren't me 
go through the same thing that I go through, then that sounds to me like you're trying to make a more, again, trying to make the world more homogenous, trying to make everyone the same except your same. And I've never liked that so much of what uh, anything kind of comes down to always seems like it's that. It's always, how about you be more like the rest of people? I think like in a lot of cases, uh, for a lot of different things, I kind of see a lot of human behavior. It's seeming a bit weird. I sometimes wonder like, you know, am I an alien like sent to observe people? Because there's so many strange things people do, you know, whether it's regards to how like music just is pervasive in every uh, walk of life. Like if you try to explain music to someone who doesn't get it, it it's never going to work, right? Like, oh yeah, there's ha sounds that are happy and sometimes they sing words, but you don't like them for the words, you like them for the meaning, but the, the words don't convey the meaning, but they kind of convey the meaning, you know? Like trying to explain pretty much anything makes you sound a bit like an alien. But one of the worst things is how people have this uh, idea that their ideas are the best ideas and that everyone else's ideas are either stupid or dumb, or in some cases that some people's ideas are evil. And it's like, no, everyone just has their own different like bowl of priorities and their own different like sets of things attached. And I've never liked that people just get into this like vengeous mindset of like, yeah, people who aren't me, they suck because they're not doing as well as I am. And it's like, no, that, that shouldn't be how you assume things are. Anyway, so uh, the, the, there's my plastic straw rant. I really hate that we have assumed we've solved something when really we just got rid of it. Like this is the epitome of like, I don't know, I guess I'd call it scary technology where we get to the stage where we can solve all these different problems for each other, for ourselves, where we have all this brain power, all these people who want to do good and instead we focus on solutions that are really let's just take something away from other people like I love when people work on solutions that make it better for everyone like I love social nudges even like it, honestly uh, for instance if you let, let's take the car thing right let's say cars are the very worst thing in the world and you know in certain like cities uh, you know especially in China but like you know certain cities around the world it is true that cars are causing a huge amount of the pollution that does a huge amount of damage to people uh, you know maybe to the environment too but like you know the amount of fumes you, you have to absorb in while you're in those cities it's really really bad so we need less cars, right? So instead of just getting rid of cars, making people go through this terrible thing, I've always preferred like the slight nudge system. Like you nudge people very slightly and then they can make the decision with that slightly adjusted nudge. No one has to lose something they had before. No one is just having someone taken away from them. But instead, for instance, I, I like the, I, I think it is a, a Beijing maybe. Uh, there's a number on your license plate. That number gives you a day of the week. That car can't be driving around that particular city. So you can go drive it in another city, but if you have to work in that city, as most people do Monday through Friday, then you can either catch the public transport or you can car you know, you get a friend to car share with you. Uh, small things like that. I think it's even on the higher end of what I consider a good idea. But that little social nudge gets people to try out other things and then maybe they like carpooling. They realize that, oh yeah, we're good friends. We'll do this two days and then I'll get in your car the other three days and we'll have a good solution that way. I like when people are at least encouraged to try the solutions through little nudges, little fun things. This is why when companies do promotions, right? They're like, oh yeah, your first uh, you know Sunday will only cost a pound or buy one, get one free. Have you never no, have you ever noticed how no store is ever like, you know what, we need to make more sh more sales of cookies and people are buying a lot of bread. What if we stopped selling bread and only sold cookies? Some people would end up buying cookies. No, that's a terrible idea. That, that results in a lot of people who can't buy the thing they want and being disgruntled, but raise the price of bread a little bit and do a half price cookie promotion. And suddenly, you know, like some same number of people might buy bread. A few people will be like, you know what, bread's just a bit too much. Let's, let's work out another breakfast item. Oh, let's move to the cookies. I guess probably like a pastry is a better example. <laughs> like, no, I, again, we're going back into top five desserts. That's right, number three, making a comeback right in the middle of the video here. It's the best dessert. It's so good. You can even have it for breakfast. Although actually speaking of breakfast, every single time we get into like a Toy Cat style podcast, the breakfast or like any live stream, the breakfast question comes up at least once. And I think it's important to address one, why this even happened, because I think I went into a big rant on about how breakfast is the most important meal of the day. And it like, I, I have different breakfasts every day. It's a fun question. There's always a different answer. I had pizza for breakfast today. And my uh, revelation of the week, my important discovery, because this channel, we cover Minecraft news, we cover the latest goings on, things that have been found, survival projects, but also here's some breakfast news to share with you all because I have seen some studies and honestly, I didn't look too deep into them because I liked the conclusion and didn't want to, which is what most people do. But uh, honestly, I have seen these studies that actually having a slice of pizza for breakfast is significantly healthier than a bowl of cereal. You might be like, no toy cat, that's crazy. That's that's like saying that eggs are literally cancer or that paper straws are actually all right, you know? Uh, no, it's, it's not like any of those things uh, because 
here's the deal, right? A slice of pizza has a fair number of calories. You know, like if, if you eat like four of them for dinner, that's a, that's a big dinner. That's a, you know, like a, a big thing. But if you just have a single slice of pizza for breakfast, like most people do, it actually has uh, you know fewer calories than a bowl of cereal because cereal is like, you know, it's covered in sugar. It's covered in all these other things. And because the balance of most cereals is significantly worse for you, whereas a pizza, especially if you have any meat topping on there, but even if you don't, has more protein, the pizza is generally speaking better for you than the bowl of cereal. That's right, pizza for breakfast, it's the healthy alternative. I mean, there are healthier alternatives than both, but I mean, again, it's a, it's a small little thing. I think you would probably benefit if you switched to having pizza for breakfast, but you know what I'm not gonna do in response to this? I'm not gonna say, hey, Pizza's now healthy for breakfast. I think people who are, cause you know, if, if you actually, if you get less healthy, it's worse for everyone because of the way health systems work, especially in countries with public health systems. I think we need to get rid of breakfast that involves cereal. Those darn cereal lovers and their contribution to the dairy board, is, is dairy good or bad this example? I don't know. But like, you know, the contribution to all those things, it's terrible. So what we're gonna do is we're just gonna ban cereal. Or maybe so we can pretend that people still have the choice, we could just force cereal to be made out of paper because paper's actually much better for the environment than cereal, so uh, all cereal is now gonna be made out of paper, and instead of coming in cardboard boxes, because that's bad, it's gonna be only legal to sell it in like 10 liter uh, you know, bottles that are actually made of tires. In fact, actually, yeah, you know, like tires, I, or like, wait, no, no, a steel drum, like uh, reused oil barrels. That's the only way to buy your paper cereal now. I mean, like, you still get to make your choice, right? It's an, everyone can make the choice between pizza and cereal. It's just your cereal only gets sold in 80 kilogram batches. And uh, also, you know, the pizza is gonna be, you know, like the same price as before, but it's totally your choice. No, that's not what you've done. You've just ruined a thing. And again, I, I really am mad about this uh, straw thing, just because I really think that when humanity tries, when any particular human tries, they can solve amazing problems just in the, the scale of one person. Like even on the most basic scale, uh, you know, for instance, when schools don't have particularly great, you know, selections of, you know, drinks or whatever, there's always someone, everyone has a story of someone at their school like this. I know someone who was like this. Uh, his name was Sunil, by the way. I, he was a Indian fella. And I don't think we ever interacted besides once in Spanish class where maybe, uh, he laughed at me, so you know I don't I don't like this fella. But what I do uh, admire about him is I admire his uh, you know his entrepreneurial spirit in there. Like oh yeah, people want drinks, can't get them. This guy bridges the gaps, buy them in, buys them in bulk, makes a little bit of money, and now everyone gets a bit happier. They can give a little bit of money and in exchange get a slightly better drink. I love that sort of thing because now they're happier. And it, although in this case, like oh yeah, there's some probably concerns about unhealthiness in schools. That's a, a big concern, a valid one or whatever. But you know I I love the idea that like oh yeah, you can do a thing that can solve everyone's issues on like a really easy micro scale and you know that's on the tiniest micro in a school like guy just trying to make the best for himself kind of example but there are so many better examples like I mentioned in the beginning uh, you can watch a billion videos about amazing cheap easy cures for various huge issues we've gone through like think about uh, you know even vaccines that's cool and hip right let's bring it into the meme world but like you know vaccines are crazy cheap to produce and the amount of lives they save even if you're one of those people who believes it causes autism, which I think is an interesting group of people, especially because, you know, again, I, I don't think, you know, autism is so bad as, you know, dying in some cases, but you get the point that like, okay, so, uh, you know, like even if you're one of those people, like the amount of lives it's saved over human history, even if you don't think it's right for your child and you're wrong, but even if you don't think that, the amount of lives it saves for this tiny cheap thing is like, my God, the first person to realize that just like infecting people with the tiniest bit of disease somehow stops it happening later. Uh, and I believe uh, it's Jenna. I studied this in history. I don't know why I studied medical history, but uh, there's a guy named Jenna and he uh, like actually was one of the first people to realize that like, oh yeah, this doesn't come back once you get it the first time. Uh, in the same way that like chicken pox, you get it once when you're young and then that's kind of it. But if you get it as an adult, it like messes you up. Uh, you know, there's, there's simple things like that that can save millions of lives because he came up with a solution. Instead of being like, you know what, let's just ban people who, as soon as you get smallpox, let's kill you and then that can be a solution. No, you're just getting rid of a thing. Whereas actually coming up with a solution, I love that. That's the sort of thing where I'm like, yeah, man, this this one dude just trying to fix things by himself she achieved so much. Same with, um, there's a guy named Louis Pasteur. You might be like, Pasteur is an interesting name. Uh, he, I believe he is the, either the inventor or the founder or the first person to widely uh, spread uh, pasteurization, which is basically, the, it, it's a really bizarre concept, but when you heat something up, you get rid of all the bacteria. And as long as you don't expose it to more air, it has, you, you know it's clean. This is why uh, milk, what we do is we pasteurize it, we heat it up a whole bunch, we get the milk crazy hot, 
and then it gets rid of all the germs, and then even when it cools down again, as long as no extra air gets in, again, it's a really, like, it's, it's basic medical science, but it's fascinating to me at least, as long as no more air gets in, then you have this much less disease-ridden stuff, and, you know, deaths go down from tens of thousands uh, a year from, you know, bad milk to, oh yeah, now very few people die from it, and, uh, you know, this actually has, like, the double effect, because although the biggest reason to, you know, invent pasteurization would be like, oh yeah, well, we can save lives, that almost is kind of like a secondary effect to the fact that it meant that you could have milk farms move further away from the cities. Previously, if you were a milk factory, either you had your factory in the city, you sold your milk the next day before it went bad, or you were outside the city, your milk got there three days late, and you had to sell it really cheap because guess what? Your milk is worth less because there's a really good chance that you'll give people all the weird cow diseases that you get from milk. So yeah, long story short, it now meant that everyone can move out the city instead of having these like super highly wanted like milk factory places, everyone can move out further, have cheaper places, milk gets cheaper for everyone, one, and we save lives. That's the stuff that makes me go, yeah, that's that's what I'm talking about. That's that's fixing a thing right there. And uh, yeah, it's a little bit of like a callback to the interesting days of like, so science is a fairly, like, you know, at least most sciences uh, kind of have their heydays from like the, the 17th, the 18th, the 19th centuries, like even the early 20th century. So many of the amazing inventions that make our world possible in terms of now it's, you know how like if you have a friend that you knew 10 years ago, you don't assume he's dead because you haven't seen him in 10 years. That's possible because of all the advancements we've had in you know, medicine the last like 300 years. So like there's this interesting period of science from the last 300 years or so where like as an individual, you could just pave ground, make a new field. And although that's not so easily possible anymore, you know, we've covered all the basics. We're on the next layer of the tech tree where you have to take an existing advancement and then make it better, safer, more efficient, etc. And a lot of people take that because it means you kind of have to be educated to get on the first rung in a lot of different sciences as like, uh, oh yeah, well now the only way to really fix things is with teams of 10,000. Because there are teams of scientists, you know, in the hundreds, sometimes thousands, uh, that work on like collective cures together. You know, research agencies, uh, R&D departments, that work on making things slightly better for companies, but that doesn't mean that's the only way you can make a great advancement in science, but also in the rest of the world. If you want to improve the world, it's actually a thing you can do on an individual level. Everyone has gone to the stage now where they assume we operate as groups, right? There are the groups of people, you know, there's us, the good guys, there's the bad guys, there's the kind of neutral guys, and they group everyone together just based on like arbitrary, you know, like characteristics. Like, uh, you know, people who are just like, oh yeah, all men are the same, men are trash, or like, all white people are trash, or like, if you flip both those sentences around, they somehow get more offensive if you say all oh, women are trash or if you say all oh, Asians are terrible. And I'd be offended at that. I'll have you know I'm a quarter Asian. We did the it, I, the DNA result came out of an early video, so go watch that at some point. But no, my point with this is just that we've gone to the stage now where we just group people based on huge characteristics. We don't know anything about them, but we just assume like, okay, so these people, these key groups are on our side. Those groups are not on our side. Let's do things that, that you know, let's try and benefit these people the most and anyone outside of our, our little bubble, we're going to hate those. I've always hated that we're slowly going that way. We're seeing people less and less as individual groups of people and more and more as groups that are either doing good or doing bad or hurting people or helping people. And I really, really don't like that. I really like the world of individuals because when you see people as individuals, when people believe in individuals, that's when you get these amazing things done. If, you know, Louis Pasteur was just like, I am but a French man. I must work on my croissant. Uh, I assume he's French actually from the name. I'm going to real quick, just, I believe Pasteur is French, but, uh, cause it's such a French name, right? But you know, Louis Pasteur was a French biologist. Yeah. He's, he's from France. So if he was just like, I'm going to be a croissant farmer cause I am but a Zimbabwe a fringe man, then, you know, we wouldn't have, uh, well, you would probably die of milk at some point in your life. That would suck, wouldn't it? You know? And yeah, I always think that, you know, if you're at the very top levels, if you have that magic all reaching arm in, you can categorize people in, in certain different ways. Like you can work out that people from, uh, you know, like X group or Y group are more likely to do Z thing or, you know, I know Q thing. We ran out of letters at the end of the alphabet. Uh, you know, that might be true on a statistical level, but the correct way to fix anything like that, like say you work out that, you know, for instance, uh, you know, people named Andrew are more likely to commit crimes, then what you do is instead of arresting everyone named Andrew, uh, maybe I'm biased on this one, uh, maybe we should just arrest all those filthy Andrews, but instead of doing something like that, you could be like, okay, we'll just be more careful with them, you know, maybe if you're an Andrew, it's easier to make yourself on the, like, I don't know, like, 
like the 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 watch list. I'm assuming there's watch lists. I know there's a a no fly list in America, which is like in a country that big is basically saying a no travel list, right? Because it's like 30 hours to drive from New York to California versus like four or five on the plane. So like you know like when when you have lists like that, you know there's lists of people that are basically being watched at all times. Is how I anticipate that one. You know like okay maybe put them on the list easier like on an earlier stage than otherwise. Like having slight little nudges like oh yeah we've worked out the people who are. I don't know, like blonde, are slightly more likely to speed than, I don't know, uh, I'm, I'm, I'm literally spitballing here, I probably should have <laughs> come up with these uh, better, but like, okay, when you do catch someone who's speeding, assume they've been speeding more in between each time, and I, I, I think you get points on your license, right, if you are caught speeding, like, I'm assuming free out of nowhere, you get four instead, okay, so now you can only speed three times before you lose your license as opposed to four. Like, you know, micro adjustments like that, or even just like, okay, well, if they speed more, then a different set of rules can apply when they're caught doing, uh, you know, X thing or Y thing. And I, 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 again, another example of like, oh yeah, so here's a good way to fix this one is, okay, let's let's go back to plastic straws, right? I'm still angry, it's still not out there. So uh, plastic straws, for instance, a, a good example of something else that people didn't like and we basically got rid of was plastic bags. So in the UK, it costs 5p minimum to buy a plastic bag. Uh, it's a charge to the store, so the, ch uh, the store mandatorily takes it, and the amount of bag use went down significantly uh, as a result, and the reason that's so great is because it gives both sides an option. If you need these bags because you need to get shopping somewhere, which people do, people like doing that, you can just hold it all right, but it's uncomfortable, awkward, and hurts people a little bit. Instead, okay, you pay the charge, and that reminds you to bring, reuse your bags, bring in more, uh, you know, do whatever you need to do, and if you don't wanna be that person, if you wanna help your environmental cause or whatever, then you don't do it and you get financially rewarded and that's how it could work with straws, right? Like, you know, you you, you throw a few penny down for the straws. And the thing I really like, really like about this, so there's something, uh, that, of all the things in the world, there's something I really like that everyone is universally opposed to and it is that basic idea of like uh, what I would call unbundling, what people would just call excessive charging. I really like that, for instance, Ryanair or any other budget airline charges you more if you want to bring extra bags and be that person who checks a huge thing of luggage. I, I really like that they charge for a seat selection. They charge for all these various different things that you don't need but might want because then they mean then that means that like they can drive down the average cost people who don't want those things in theory the supermarket has to reduce all of their prices so that the average shop is about 5p less or 4p let's say the bag costs a pennies produce it realistically won't happen but like over time of enough competition it would uh you know or at least they're gonna have more profits to invest in more different things uh with the airline example with the Ryanair with the other budget airline I love that like oh yeah so if you want those services and sometimes I do I, I buy seats every now and then I you know have bought uh like an extra bag uh, a couple of times and that means you have the options there but when you don't have the options it's a lot cheaper because it just assumes you want the bare bones the bare minimum and then you can add things on top of it this means that people who are who do want the luxury experience, who do want everything, can just drop the money, pay for all those things, and basically by paying more, they're subsidizing everyone else on there. Assuming you're not one of those people who's like, oh, well then the company's just gonna take the extra money, and they're greedy, and they're gonna put it in a big pot somewhere, and be a dragon and stir it, but it's like, I mean, if it, in a competitive market, they're gonna uh, lower prices, in a non-competitive market, at least that money's being invested somewhere, like, their staff will get paid slightly more, or, you know, like, somewhat, that, that money goes somewhere, you know, it doesn't just disappear into a black hole, like a lot of people seem to assume, and yeah, basically, my point here is that paper straws are this worrying sign that we don't care about fixing problems. We just like to feel like we do. I, and honestly, that's that's a worrying consequence of the fact that if we're being entirely honest, it is hard to keep track of everything that you're meant to care about, you've got to care about. And that, you know, that that's true. Like, it's, it's fine to care about things on only the surface level to only really know, like, oh yeah, this is probably a good thing overall. But it's good if we have lots of people who specialize, who dive deep into that, who try their best to fix things. And that is something that I really like. That's something that, uh, you know, I, maybe I don't do enough, maybe I should try more, but also it's something that if you have think to yourself, like, you know, this thing is done really badly, I wonder why that is, you might just have the solution that no one's thought of yet, and if you do, I hope it works really well for you, give it a whirl, speak to someone about it, see if they're on board, because when you start to think of yourself as just a number, a part of a group, a part of like, oh yeah, I'm just these characteristics about myself, when you dehumanize yourself, you know, like dehumanizing other people, like sure, it's, it's hard to know for sure, am I the only human alive, or is everyone else also human? Like, it, you know, that's the eternal, uh, it's an existential debate you can never answer. You can never confirm if everyone else are humans, or just robots, or like, you know, like, uh, humans that can pretend to be sentient, because independent thought or sentience, so whatever you want to call the inside of your brain, the part of you that's like, listening to this and responding to me right now, there's no way you can verify other people have that because it's only conveyed 
via your, you know, your fleshy human body. It's only conveyed via your actions, your words, your everything that you do, uh, you know, is interacting via this third party interface. And therefore, you know, it's hard for you to convince anyone you're human. It's hard for them to convince you they're human, but you shouldn't dehumanize them. You shouldn't dehumanize yourself. You are an individual person. You can do amazing things if you believe in yourself, if you want to. And don't let anyone tell you otherwise by saying that, no, actually, you're just this. You'll only ever be this because I've decided it and I'm the only human alive. Now, nah, you're. if there's only one human, it's either you or it's me. And it's, it's definitely not them. Anyway, I, I don't know where this was going. That was a bit of a weird thing at the end. But I will say, I hope you all enjoy this video. I hope that my uh, kind of off-topic plastic <laughs> straw rant didn't go uh, too far for you. But it is something that I've been thinking about a lot recently, and I hope it's something you all enjoyed hearing. If you liked this video, you can like it and let me know. You can share it if you really liked it, and you can subscribe with notifications turned on if you want to see more of these Toy Cat podcasts. There'll be one next week, and hopefully the week after that. Uh, and I, I, I know, it's just like, there's a lot of things I want to talk about, and I hope that me doing it for 40 minutes is something you got something out of. And uh, if you want to support this, hit the join button on YouTube. I've been considering like eventually doing some form of like solo Toy Cat podcast thing. Uh, it basically requires on you either having YouTube premium or like using the YouTube, uh, yeah, what's it called? Member system, the join system, because obviously YouTube ads on a 40 minute video and 40 minutes of time and uh, like the fact that it will never be recommended. So it'll only ever get a few thousand views at most. Again, look at this video's views, compare it to the rest of them. Obviously it's not going to do so great, but yeah, that, that's why it only works because of those two things. So let me know if you'd like to see that and uh, maybe one day it'll be a reality. But for now, hope you all enjoyed it and I'll see you all next week for episode two of the Temporary Toy Cat Podcast. Wait, let's let's go for alliteration like TTT. The Temporary Toy Cat Talks Time Today. <laughs> that works. Goodbye.